Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys some quick tips for improving the UI and UX in your designs. I have five tips for you guys today, so let's go ahead and just dive right into it. The first tip I have for you guys is make sure you're planning the hierarchy of your project. Having a hierarchy plan before you start designing is going to give you a good foundation to start your design. It's going to give you that clarity to know exactly where you need to start and what screens and pages you need to create. So it's going to promote a better user interface because you're going to know what screen needs to take you where and so you can work on designing how that's going to happen. It's also going to promote a better user experience because your app or product is going to flow a lot better. For, so for my first tip, if you're not already planning out the hierarchy of your product, I would recommend you spend some time doing that, either sketching it on paper, mocking it up in Adobe XD, or using a program like Milnote just to get that visual hierarchy laid out before you start wireframing and developing screens. Speaking of Milnote, they are sponsoring today's video. Milnote is a bit different than traditional software. It's more like working on a wall in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, gather and organize all of your inspiration in one convenient place, and it allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or clients in real time. As a full stack designer, it's an essential part of my workflow, and this awesome tool is free, so check out the link at the top of the description. So now you might have planned a great hierarchy which promotes good user flow, but if you have a terrible navigation and you don't let your users access it, it's not going to matter. So for tip number two, make sure you have a good navigation. It needs to be simple, easy to use, and you need to have access to it. We've all been in the scenario where we select something on an app or a website, and then we feel like we're stuck there and we're not really sure how to get back. So something as small as including a back or a close icon on a screen can drastically improve a user experience. So just making sure that your well-designed navigation has good functionality behind it and accessibility is a great thing to focus on. Users who are getting lost and confused and can't find what they want in the app or the product are probably not going to use it for very long. So that is tip number two. Make sure you have a good accessible navigation. Tip number three is making sure that your text and dialogue in your product's design is not confusing or unreadable. As designers, often we may not have complete control over what a client wants in a body of text, but it is our job to at least advise them on what good practices they should do, such as not jamming the same keyword 15 times in a paragraph or displaying a book that's unreadable on a website, for example. It's just important to remember that text doesn't just need to look great. It also needs to read great because that dialogue is part of the design as a whole. So we want to make sure that the visual side of the text looks good, yes, but also the dialogue in the text is good as well. So that's tip number three. Make sure you have clear dialogue in your design. For tip number four, make sure you're providing your users with feedback. So adding little things into your design, like a loading on a button or a hover effect on the desktop version, can really make the user experience a positive one because you're giving them information based on their actions. So there's nothing worse when you're on a website and you click buy now and you're sitting there and nothing is happening. The page is just sitting there. You don't see anything loading or changing and you're wondering, do I click it again? Did it go through? Did I lose internet? That can cause confusion and panic and lead to a negative user experience. So yet here's another one again, by adding those little things like loading on buttons and hover effects can just really change the way that your design is perceived either positively or negatively. So for tip number four, make sure you're providing those users with that crucial feedback. So for the fifth and final tip of this video to improve your UI and UX in your designs, make sure you're doing user testing. Currently, if you're doing no user testing, Try not to worry about getting it in the hands of the most optimal user test group right away. Some testing is better than no testing. So you want to make sure that you test it yourself by prototyping it in Adobe XD maybe and getting some of the kinks worked out and then sharing it with family members or friends to see what they think. Or you can go to some online communities like some design related discord servers. I have my own down in the description. There's a link for that. And in places like that, you can share your prototype and people will walk through them and give you their feedback. But overall, one of the best ways to improve the UI and UX of a design is get it in the hands of people, see what they think and see how they respond to it. And that way you can adjust from there to make the UI and UX a little bit better. So with that said, that is all five of the tips I have for you guys today. 
Thanks again to Millinote for sponsoring today's video. If you would like to check out their product for planning your next creative project, you can check out the link at the top of the description. Subscribe for more design related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh,